time, so I can come down and give my speech, I'd like to ask Legislator Mary Warrow, borrowing from uh, borrowing from Legislator Mayo's uh, discussion about uh, female leaders in the legislature, it made me want to have you come up this evening. Good evening, colleagues, friends, and guests. Serving as your chairman has truly been among the honors of my life. It's been my goal to lead this body toward our true potential envisioned in the Charter. Although we're certainly not all the way there yet, we've made some serious strides. I'm determined to use whatever time I have left as the leader of this legislature to usher us closer to that goal. This evening you've heard from Majority Leader Mayo and Minority Leader Rodriguez. In my first term as chairman, I've learned many important lessons. The role of chairman is much more than just a list of goals for the year and a plan to reach them. It's about leading this body to its full potential. It's about helping the minority and the majority alike achieve their shared goals for the year. This chairman's address will not be the typical recitation of my priorities, but a discussion about our progress as a body and my vision to lead us forward. Working together, we had a really great 2016. I don't think it was you know, mediocre, I think it was great. Uh, Democrats working with Republicans, legislators from the northern end of the county and the southern end of the county, from the eastern and western ends of the county, and even the legislature working with the executive. We've worked to find compromise and consensus to make Ulster County even better. My door has been open, and many legislators from both sides of the aisle have walked through it to share their vision for our community. Some of the ideas that have come forward I've embraced, others we've uh, not pursued, and even some that I've not embraced have moved forward nonetheless. One thing that we've not done, nor will we moving forward under my leadership, is rush initiatives through without the proper vetting and due diligence that our constituents deserve. Deliberation, discussion, and debate help to avoid the pitfalls and unintended consequences that often pop up when legislation is passed willy-nilly. Two great examples of that patience, perseverance, and performance are evidenced by the two local laws we have before us for adoption tonight, the pet seller's law and the cyberbullying law. Both local laws, which I have sponsored, amended, and advocated for, and look forward to adopting, have been with us for more than a year. Both address serious societal problems and aim to might make life better for both children and animals, neither of which have the ability or mental acuity to advocate for themselves. I want to now spend a few minutes talking about each of them and the process that we have taken that has allowed us to craft not necessarily the quickest or most convenient laws, but the best laws. Beginning with the Pet Sellers Law, a law that was first proposed in July of 2015, but was crafted without an important group of stakeholders at the table, the pet sellers themselves. For months we toiled and argued, we amended and fought, and the year ended without a comprehensive Pet Sellers Law. At the beginning of my term as chairman, I engaged both the animal advocates, which I number myself among. Most of you know, my wife Rachel and I rescued our dog George, who was an abandoned pit bull mix, as well as the pet sellers, particularly the hobby breeders, represented by Tom and Beverly Delaney. We worked together to craft the best law for the animals and the best law for the dealers, which also means that it's the best law for the people we serve, the residents of Ulster County. Working on this law was not easy. My right, Legislative Briggs? <laughs> but I want to thank partners on both sides of the aisle that supported me in this journey. And Legislator T.J. Briggs, of course, my chairman of the Law Enforcement and Public Safety Committee, who sat in countless meetings with me on this, and Mary Warrow, whose constituents had concerns about this law, and instead of just coming to the meetings to grumble, as some do, brought forward ideas, and worked with us to craft the best law we could possibly have. Moving on to cyberbullying. 
It was first proposed for no name calling week in January of last year. The law was well intentioned and thoughtfully crafted, but faced opposition for one specific reason. The school administrators and support staff were not brought into the process. Now as a victim of bullying myself, along with countless others, this is a very important issue to me. So we set to work on improving the law, making sure it's acceptable to school administrators, and assuring that we would avoid unduly punishing the youths charged with this offense. But instead, this law would be used as a way to change behavior. What we have before us tonight passes constitutional muster, it protects the defenseless victims of cyberbullying, and it protects children under 16 from entering their adult life marked by a criminal record. It is my sincere hope that the law passes as written tonight and we can all go home knowing that we've saved the lives of children suffering from this blight on our society. I want to thank partners on both sides of the aisle, Legislator James DeLon, Ron Lapp, and Majority Whip Carl Belfilio for supporting this initiative and standing up for these young victims. This year, we are embarking on the renovation of the BRC into the new Ulster County Family Court Complex. This legislature has had a role in the move from the very beginning. Multiple subcommittees and much lively debate and discussion resulted in our decision to make the move. The ballot question was written by me with input from the county executive and members of the legislature, and the voters approved it to the tune of more than 72% of the vote. We owe it to them to keep a watchful eye on this important project and make sure it comes in on time on budget and truly works to better serve the children and families of Ulster County that utilize our family court. For these reasons, I sponsored a resolution creating a special oversight committee for the family court renovation and relocation. I have every confidence that committee chairman, legislator Litz, and the other committee members will do us proud and ensure that we watch the taxpayers' hard-earned dollars. For their support of this project, and more personally, for their support of me, in the wording of the ballot proposition, I would like to thank legislators Chris Allen and Craig Lopez and my Ways and Means Chairman Richard Gerentine. We've worked collectively over the years in any way we can to support the Crossroad Ventures project at Bel Air. There are many who have worked against the project citing environmental objections, most of which are bunk. But this body has stood staunchly beside the project. Numerous resolutions and letters have been authored or sent by this body over the year, including a resolution and a letter sent last month asking the governor to restore funding that had previously been removed. We were all pleased to find out later that week that funding had nearly all been committed to be restored by the governor. I'd like to single out Legislator Peter Lauren and Vice Chairman James Maloney for their long-term support of this project, but also for their commitment to all economic development in Ulster County. And no, Hector and I did not collude with these speeches beforehand. He didn't see mine, I didn't see his. It just works out that we're saying the same things. Talking about resolutions and letters, this seems like a great time to talk about the proposed ban on memorializing resolutions. I know that there are a sizable number of people signed up for public comment this evening to either talk about the proposed ban or a specific memorializing resolution. It's become clear to me through emails, letters to the editor, and phone calls that there is a rash of misinformation out there about the effect of this ban. So let me clear up some misconceptions. The proposed ban does not stop citizens from exercising their First Amendment rights as some have been asserting. We have a public comment period at every one of our legislative meetings and we invite comment on agenda and non-agenda items alike. Another misconception is that this will hamper our ability to speak directly to our state and federal representatives. This could not be further from the truth. We send letters, emails, petitions, and make phone calls on a daily and weekly basis to our elected representatives. I can tell you that some letters have had an even more tangible result than some of our memorializing resolutions. Now I respect the opinion of those in this room who disagree with me on this issue. I've always believed, and I've said it to most of you, that smart and dedicated individuals can disagree. What I cannot respect are legislators who have been using these resolutions and this proposed ban as an attempt to divide and politicize this body. 
You can always tell where the motivation is when the blatant and embarrassing grandstanding begins. I have a different belief about government and a different philosophy about leadership than these legislators. Democrat Adelaide Stevenson remarked after losing the presidency to President Eisenhower, that which unites us as American citizens is far greater than that which divides us as political parties. I believe that that perfectly translates right down to us here in Ulster County. We've been working together so well as a body and as a government that some legislators only looking for strife and division have turned to memorializing resolutions to try to play politics like you only find on the state and national level. Now I support this ban on memorializing resolutions, one I've not supported in years past because I will not stand to see our body unnecessarily divided for the benefit of a few and to the detriment of the people who matter most, the more than 180,000 residents of Ulster County that we serve. Thank you to Legislator Richard Parity and Kevin Roberts for your perseverance on this issue and for your commitment to helping refocus the body on county issues that we have direct responsibility for. In closing, my door remains open to you and my mind remains open to your ideas, but there is no room in either for petty partisan politics. I will continue to work with every fiber of my being, with every tool in my tool belt, and with all of the knowledge that I've acquired to keep this body as a cooperative, deliberative, and productive body. Someone whose friendship I cherish and I were having a conversation right before my re-election as chairman about a criticism that I've received from a few legislators. That criticism is that I work too well with our county executive. My friend said to me, if the only bad thing they can say about you is that you work too well with people, then you must be doing a pretty good job. I really think we are. And friends, I hope you will continue to join me in working on the many things that unite us rather than searching for the few that divide us. Doing so, we can continue to make Ulster County the best place in the world to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you very much.